finally, after weeks of it being promised, we have snow. Wow, what an absolute treat to wake up to a morning like this. Look at that. This is one view that never gets old. There was a pheasant that just walked across a second ago. I wish I got that on film. You okay, mate? The man that held his bladder the whole night last night. Unbelievable, Techers. This small boy. I think he needs a poo because he's got the zoomies. Wow, the birds have been getting on those feeders. Wow, what a lovely, lovely morning. Stunning. I wish it snowed a little bit more around here. This is what he does when he needs a poo. He doesn't know what to do with himself. Go for a poo! Is he, is he pooing all over? There he is. Too close. I'll help you. You little boy. Teamwork makes the dream work, mate. That's the thing. I like it. We are outside and this is Porter's first time in the snow. <laughs> He's absolutely loving it, as you can see. Mr. I hate the cold. I yeah. think it's maybe the wind yeah. he doesn't like. It is quite warm though in the yeah. sun. It's nice. But yeah, as you can see, these little footprints can get running around. Is that fun? <laughs> Good boy. Right, you can see all where the birds have been walking in the snow around the feeders. Go on in, boy. Go on in. Go get him. Go inside and warm up. <laughs> well, the snow's now passed. Lids and I thoroughly enjoyed the few days of excitement that it did bring. We didn't really get to go out on it too much. We only went out in the garden because we couldn't leave Porter. So, um, yeah, we stayed quite close to home, but... I'm sure that across all of the fields, it looks absolutely amazing. And we didn't really go through that stage of like weeks of like slush because the rain, well, we had a really sunny day um, after the snowfall. And then we had rain on the third day, which kind of washed it all away. It was short and sweet, but we did enjoy it. I think that Lumi and Porter also enjoyed it as well. I think them more than us are probably pleased to see the back of it because I'm sure it's quite cold on the pores when the snow has settled. But the reason why we're upstairs in my wardrobe is because I've been doing a little bit of shopping and I decided to make the most of Reese's 60% sale and I picked up a couple of pieces that I've known for a long time that I've needed in my wardrobe uh, that I just haven't really got around to searching for. So the first piece, which if you have seen my Instagram reels from the snow day, uh, you'd have seen I wore it there. It's a cable knit roll neck. This is that item that Lydia said that my wardrobe needed and I just hadn't really got around to buying one. So quite standard kind of print down the sleeve as well, a nice chunky roll neck which is actually at first when I first started wearing roll necks quite uncomfortable but it's actually something that I take a lot of comfort in now like I really like having maybe it's like the support or just the sort of comfort of it around my neckline and of course it keeps you nice and warm as well especially on those cold days so this was my first pickup um, it was retailing at 125 I think I got it for 60 uh, pound so yeah a great steal and as long as I take good care of it and don't shrink it in the wash <laughs> this should last me a decent amount of time anyway and then the next pickup came about when I attended the GQ man of the year awards which was a virtual event last year with boss and it came to my attention that I really don't have many black tie variations I've got a couple of tuxedos very classic styles black with silk lapels and I decided that I wanted something that was a little bit different, but still very formal. So I decided to go for Reese's Bordeaux Velvet Red Blazer, which you can see here. Now, this is gonna be perfect with a nice pair of black dinner trousers. I even went and brought the red velvet bow tie to suit. So um, I've got a little matching combo there. Again, this was reduced. It says it retails at 295, I believe it was 60% off. A nice little addition to that part of my wardrobe because like I said, I didn't really have anything other than those black tuxes. And so I can still use the same trouser set and obviously the same shoes that I would wear with that and then just chuck a different jacket on, 
with a different bow tie. Yeah, it kind of just expands that side of my wardrobe, which obviously isn't something that you pull out on a weekly or even monthly basis. You know, normally red carpet events, uh, which are far and few between. So it is really nice to uh, have a jacket should I get invited to a smart dinner where the code is uh, black tie and uh, I've got a nice little alternative because it can get a little bit boring wearing the same thing over and over again for years after years. So should the day come when we are back socializing and attending those kind of events, um, I've now got an alternative option that I picked up for a good price. Next up, this is a little tie clip that I wanted. I already had a silver tie clip that I actually purchased, I think from like Next or somewhere about 10 or 15 years ago. It's fine, it just doesn't feel very good quality. It feels a little bit light and a little bit flimsy. I just wanted to get basically a more sturdy one and uh, I thought, you know what, that's gonna be much better quality um, and it's also got this nice little detail pattern on it as well, which has a slight shimmer to it, if you can see. Because of the engraving on it, it kind of like shimmers a little bit. It's a little bit smarter. So yeah, new tie clip. And lastly, not least, this is the Bologna double-sided Paisley pocket square. So as you can see, we've got the print on this side and then we've got a sort of like dotted texture on the back. I don't ever think that I can have too many pocket squares because it's always nice to kind of mix up the accessories of your tie and your pocket square. It can really change the feel and look of a jacket. It's actually a great way of diversifying the same outfit by just simply changing these elements of the look. I've got a green one of these. Um, I now just need to find a tie, probably a brown tie would work nicely, or of course a green tie to match, but I always find it's quite tough to match colors. So I'll have to see um, what I've got or what's on the market, see if I can get a nice tie to match with this. And then moving on from Reese, you would have seen in my previous video that I watched the Todd's presentation and I was really, really impressed. The collection was really wearable. It was right up my street. And, uh, they very kindly sent out a Hello darling. A quilted green and brown jacket from the collection. It's their Fall Winter 2021-2022 collection. Um, I started this up yesterday actually in a Reels and I'm a fan. So yeah, this is gonna serve me very well during our country walks. It's got elasticated cuffs here, uh, but then on the bottom, it's got a nice hemmed finish, which I think makes jacket really smart. Embossed is the Todd's logo with the T. Um, inside, it's got really nice canvas lined pockets uh, and then a nice soft quilted finish inside with a little leather coat hanger hook. I really enjoyed their whole collection to be honest with you. So if you do want to check it out, um, in my last video I put a link in there to their website, if not, tods.com. Um, they've got some great menswear at the moment. But anyway, there has been another delivery that's arrived. I think not so much on my YouTube, but more so on my Instagram. Are you scratching my chair? Yeah, I thought so. I've been searching for some gym equipment and finally one of the pieces has arrived. So I've basically been looking to get a squat rack because I want to be able to train my legs with a little bit more intensity and a bit more weight. I also wanted to have the ability to do a barbell bench press. I've ordered the floor from one place, the, the plates and the barbell from another and then the power rack from another. And I think I need to give someone some attention. So anyway, we're gonna go downstairs. We're gonna take a look at what's arrived. Come on. You want some cuddles? Wow. Okay. As you can see, we've had quite a large delivery of some gym equipment. And you might be able to notice that on the boxes, it says mirror fit. So this is the M3 power rack. I decided to go with this rack because it offered the support but more importantly, the size dimensions fitted perfectly in the gym room and it also was at equal height to the existing cable rack that we've got in here, which for me, that just is very satisfying. <laughs> the plan of action is, I've managed to source the same gym flooring that we've got over here. So the same pattern, size, width and depth. And I'm gonna install it across the back line of the room. And I'm gonna remove the dumbbell rack and the cables and I'm gonna stick the cables over on this corner. I'm gonna get a different rack for the dumbbells that's gonna be long and flat that are probably gonna go over here where these are sitting at the moment. And then I'm gonna put the power rack at the back corner. We're gonna have a little bit of a jig around. I'm not sure whether the bag's gonna stay or not. It'd be a shame to get rid of it because I do use it occasionally, but 
I definitely don't use it the most, so we'll see. We are trying to make sure that we're making the most of the gym space and the most important thing is that when we come down here we're able to perform all of the exercises that we need to to make sure that we're stimulating the whole body and the power rack was definitely something that we have been missing so really pleased to finally see that's arrived i obviously don't want to build it now because i need to make sure that my gym flooring's in before i do so but i might unbox it and get some bits together ready so when it does arrive, I can put the flooring down and get busy building, but we'll see, see what Lids wants to do. So I just had a little chat with Lids and it seems that the most sensible thing to do would be to stack it down in this room. And uh, when the floor arrives, I'll unbox it and then build it. But what I'll do is, so you can see exactly what this piece of gym equipment is. I'm gonna insert an image here. That way you can take a look and see it, but that's not all that's coming. I've also got a couple of attachments um, that are currently out of stock and also the bench that is out of stock that I'm gonna be ordering to go with it. And then I've ordered a barbell and plate from Elico. Uh, my friend Ben suggested those as a brand because he said they're really reliable and they're kind of like the market leaders in that area. So I went ahead and ordered the barbell and plates from those guys. Once the gym floor's in, and all of the equipment's in, I'm gonna be able to perform like full on leg sessions, chest sessions. It's literally just gonna like complete my training circuits. How I used to train when I was going to a gym. So I'm really, really looking forward to this section of the gym to go in because I feel like then the functionality of the gym is exactly where I want it to be. I think if there was one more machine I could add into this room, it would be the leg extension. And the reason why I just found that when I was training, that was, a stimulant that really really got my quads working and i think that when i had some growth of my quads that machine was responsible for it but for now we'll make do with lunges and squats and more of the compound kind of movements to try and get a little bit of size back on because it goes without saying i think people have noticed on here as well i've lost a fair amount of weight over the last few years and i definitely think that it was triggered quite heavily when links went my training had slowed down and my diet has changed etc so there's been lots of changes i'm looking forward to trying to like pack on a little bit of size again nothing too drastic probably nothing that anybody would notice it'd be nice to kind of like get a little bit more size to me again and a bit more strength because I now have no excuses when this gym's racked out and I can do everything that I wanna do and I can do some big lifts. There's no excuses why I can't pack on a bit of size. So time to get my training in check again and get busy, busy, ready for the summer. Okay, so we've moved on a few days and this morning Lids and I got up and we took Porter out for a walk and to our surprise, but also to our enjoyment, Lumi decided to join us for the walk as well, which was absolutely lovely. The four of us just went for a little wander up the road and back. It was really, really cold today, so uh, we didn't stay out there for too long. But yeah, what have I been doing over the last few days? I've basically been doing quite a lot of research and learning and trying to get on top of everything that I'm doing with the B course. I guess for the probably the next eight weeks or so, it's quite intense. So um, we're doing like two, three hour Zoom call sessions uh, once a week. And then I'm probably spending the best part of a day reading, researching, and then answering questions on the subject as well. It definitely is, and I think I said this in my last video, a lot more in depth than I first thought. And I guess that's probably quite true in most industries and most spaces. From the outside, it looks quite simplistic and you don't really truly understand everything that goes on, but from what you can see, you kind of just make these assumptions that it must be relatively straightforward, but it's not, it's quite in depth and there's lots to learn. And that's not even just talking about the biology of a bee, I'm talking about like just general beekeeping, like there are things that you need to be doing most months to check the hive's health, to make sure that you're staying on top of all of the scenarios and behaviors of the bees, which for anybody that's got any livestock or children or pets or anything, you'll know that, you know, even humans ourselves, our behavior is not predictable. How we act, how we react, the diseases and illnesses that we can pick up, all of these things play a role and also are things that you need to stay on top of. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of learning, also learning lots of new terminologies. Um, and like everything, believe it or not, there is also, loads of different ways in which you can move forward with beekeeping so there's so many different variations and it all depends on where you're located the kind of environment you're in in particular the weather conditions so there's so many variables i won't go on about it anymore but you get the gist it's uh, a lot 
larger than I first thought. So yeah, I'm just getting my head into that because I wanna make sure I can fully understand it. Which is why I didn't pick up the camera because I'm just like focused on learning. So I've been doing that, but today, talking of bees, I decided that I needed to start to do my brood frames. Uh, so basically, I'm just gonna build the frames up ready because Swarms normally start in around about April time. And so if you are looking to take on a colony of bees, you need to be prepared with all of your equipment um, and have all of the tools and everything that's necessary to take on those bees. And something that I haven't done yet uh, is get the brood frames ready um, for the hive. So I'm gonna be working on that today. And then once I have my frames built up, I can look at uh, what foundations and stuff that I need for those frames. So we're gonna run into the time lapse, I'm gonna jump into the kitchen and we're gonna get busy building. built up almost ready to go you'll see here on the left these little bits of wood here uh, these are called comb guides you can stick those in uh, the top bar to encourage the comb to start to be built off of them i'm going to speak to the beekeeping association because on the last zoom call we had they were referencing using foundation frames with um, wire tracks to help kick start the uh, comb and also make sure that it's guided so it's nice and straight the way in which they build. We shall see um, but you can always just glue those in last minute anyway so but um, yeah that's the uh, 10 frames built up ready to go into the brood box. Look at you with all of your toys. So as we predicted Lumi's made my office chair her new bed. A lovely little barber blanket. She had a little dream a second ago and she woke up meowing. You just wanted some TLC, didn't you? <laughs> Covering her eyes with her arm. Liz and I just finished off having our Sunday roast, which was insane. It was thoroughly needed. You are a little piglet. He makes these little like piggy noises. Let's get you up here. And yeah, now we are gonna wrap up. Lydia spent the day upstairs in her wardrobe, basically just having like a huge cleanse, I think. I'm not sure, but I can just see that there was stuff everywhere. And she was vlogging it, so whatever it is, it'll be on her channel. But I've been busy downstairs, as you know, building those brood frames, continuing my research and playing with you, which isn't hard, is it? Mr. Nipper. <laughs> but now we're gonna sit down and watch Queen's Gambit, which, I've just changed a series that I ran on my blog in 2020, which was called the Netflix series. And I think if Downton Abbey, if nothing else, has made me realise that I really need to be doing coverage across all of the platforms that offer uh, great series. So Sky, Amazon Prime, Netflix and so on. So I've decided to do a blog post that basically talks about a few of the series that I missed last year that I really should have watched and uh, I've selected one series per platform. So that's just gone live on my um, blog actually on Monday. And um, yeah, one of them that features in there is The Queen's Gambit, 
which is on Netflix. And I know I'm super late to the party. Um, I think there was some crazy stat, like 60 odd million people watched it within a short period of time and it broke some records. So I'm probably the only person left that hasn't watched it. Uh, and lids of course so we're going to sit down and start that this evening before we move on to pride and prodigious i think it is which i think there's a couple of them and we've been told to watch the one that's on one of the platforms i can't remember which one um so yeah we are going to start that this evening which should be cool probably get through a couple of uh, episodes tonight and then we'll continue through i think it was something crazy like there was a stat that said Queen's Gambit increased sales of chess boards by 250% or something, so it must be good. So look forward to that. If uh, anybody's watched it, I'd be interested to see what you think. By the way, we watched Bridgerton, which was not my cup of tea at all. I felt like it was a mashup of loads of different programs and I didn't quite get um, the strength of the storyline. I felt like it was a little bit lacklust. I think after Downton Abbey, it was just probably not the right program to watch. A lot of people that I spoke to were like, if you'd have watched those the other way around, you would have really enjoyed it. But because you watched Downton first, you have to kind of view Bridgerton not as a period, but just more as like an entertaining kind of show. Um, as in Downton's a little bit more like real, if that makes sense. So maybe a little bit of confusion watching it, but yeah, I didn't really enjoy that, which might be a bit controversial. I know it was a big hitter, um, but I've got a good feeling about Queen's Gambit. I'm gonna put you down for a minute. I don't know where we'd got to, but yeah, we're gonna do what we do every evening, which is sit down and uh, watch some TV. I have to say that lockdown has certainly forced a routine um, into our life because everything is obviously restricted. So we're not able to have options to go and do other stuff, which has meant that we've become very routined. And uh, it was actually really nice going out for a walk today because I didn't get out last week. Um, during the week, I don't think, Probably not true. I probably got out once or twice. Um, I know that I went out and shot some content in my garden, but I mean like properly on a walk. Um, I haven't been out, so yeah. It's been a lot more routine and a lot more consistent anyway, which has been great for my gym and uh, it's good for, for nutrition and stuff like that because you've been very consistent with what you're doing. Um, but I don't know how great it is for the headspace. <laughs> I think all this education is something that's keeping me really preoccupied because when I'm not physically working, um, I'm educating and I'm actually finding it quite tough to find time to do all of it. Also quite hard to digest all of that information as well because I'm trying to learn lots of different things at the same time at the moment and um, I think that my brain just gets to a point where it's like, just chill, just chill. And I'm like, but I need to get this done. <laughs> I wanna progress. So um, yeah. There is a little bit of that as well, but ultimately routine has been reformed um, due to lockdown and basically not really being able to leave the house. So yeah, I guess that is possibly a, a perk, I guess, but I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, yeah, trying to keep themselves as busy as possible. I'm gonna wrap this video up. I look forward to seeing you on the next one, so take care, peace. Mm -hmm.